Welcome to Tales of Honor, a podcast with a mission to tell the true stories of every recipient of our nation's highest military award, the Medal of Honor. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Tales of Honor podcast. This episode is going to be number 469. If you're new to the show, I do my best to wish a very happy birthday to every living Medal of Honor recipient on or very near, for as close as I can make it work, to their actual birthday. And today I have one of those such birthdays, and it belongs to Mr. Donald Ballard. His birthday is today, December 5th. He was born in 1945, so he turns the beautiful age of 76 years old. Donald is a former colonel, and where this gets a little complicated is he received the Medal of Honor for his actions during the Vietnam War as a Navy hospital corpsman, but he then retired from the Kansas Army National Guard as a colonel. So he's a former colonel, but he wasn't a colonel when he received it, and he wasn't even in the Army when he received the Medal of Honor. It's very confusing. Uh, All you need to know is that he turns 76 years old today. And uh, that is all I got as far as birthdays today. Uh, Tune in to the next episode for more. And until then, let's get into today's Tale of Honor. Edward, or Eddie, was born on the 14th of June, 1892, in Providence, Rhode Island, and went to school in Quincy, Massachusetts. He was an only child born into a family with a history of service in the Navy going back six generations. Eddie's parents died when he was five years old, and he went to Washington, D.C. to live with his father's parents. At 18, he graduated from the McKinley Manual Training School, now known as the Robert Gold Shaw Junior High School, in Washington, D.C., and since he had an interest in electricity, he worked in Boston for an electrical company before working at the Boston Navy Yard. Eddie enlisted in the U.S. Navy with some friends on the 30th of August, 1910, continuing his passion for electricity as a signaler on the USS Wyoming and then on the USS Calgoa. When the USS Florida deployed to support the Mexican campaign, he was an electrician third class and the chief radio operator when he displayed actions that would later earn him the Medal of Honor. The citation reads, On board the USS Florida during the seizure of Veracruz, Mexico, 21-22 April, 1914, and for extraordinary heroism in the line of his profession during this action. While the citation is pretty vague, what Eddie actually did was far from simple. He had gone ashore as part of a landing party in order to set up a communications station. When the first Marine of the Rifle Squad was shot upon reaching the roof of the Terminal Hotel, Eddie crawled through continuous fire to pull Private Daniel Haggerty from the edge and to safety. He crawled not only to prevent himself from being shot, but mostly because he had already been wounded in the legs and was unable to walk. When Eddie was found unconscious, he was sitting with Daniel dead in his arms, but Eddie did recover from most of his injuries. His left leg was amputated above the knee and was discharged from the Navy four months after the campaign. One day before the U.S. entered World War I, Eddie joined the Navy again, this time as a warrant officer with a waiver from the Secretary of the Navy. Nine months later, on the 12th of January, 1918, he was commissioned as an ensign and before the end of the year would be promoted to lieutenant junior grade. He continued in the position of radio operator and handled all communications for all cruisers and transport vessels operating in the Atlantic Ocean. When President Wilson traveled to Europe for the Paris Peace Conference on the USS George Washington, Eddie was on board and the following year he received a medical retirement with seven years of service. Eddie had married Ina and they had two sons, John, who would join the Navy, and Edward Jr., who would join the Army Air Corps and be missing in action during World War II. They lived in Milton, Massachusetts, and he taught classes about radio, worked as a reporter, and served as a district manager for the Boston Edison Company. Eddie started working at WEEI, a Boston radio station, in 1927 and worked there as an editor and eventually as an announcer. When the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, Eddie once again answered the call to serve his nation despite missing a leg and being almost 50 years old. He was a lieutenant at Naval Air Station Quonset Point in Rhode Island until the end of the war when he retired from the military for good. Eddie and Ina moved to Duxbury, Massachusetts in 1950, and on the 29th of August, 1955, Edward Allen Gisburn died at the age of 63. He and his wife are buried in a family plot in the Milton Cemetery in Milton, Massachusetts, Circle Avenue, Lot 3485. A memorial marker for their son, Edward Jr., is there with them as well. And that 
was a tale of honor. Thank you for listening to Tales of Honor, and if you enjoyed the show, please be sure to subscribe and tell your friends and family. Tales of Honor is written and produced by Christoph Ambrosch, and theme music is Loyalty and Duty by Vloru's Music. If you have any questions, you can send an email to talesofhonorpodcast at gmail.com, and please be sure to visit talesofhonorpodcast.com for more episodes and information. 